Hi, welcome to Women in Construction. Hi, I'm Felista. People may wonder why is it important to do a waterproofing. It's simple. One, just to prevent normal leaks and also uh, it's a defensive mechanism against common environmental threats. So today we are going to show you one of the cementitious products manufactured by Sika Kenya, that is Sika Semflex with the membrane. There are many ways that you can also tackle waterproofing on your roofs. Others go and um, apply the APP membranes that go on with a torch on. But today we've chose one uh, product that we're going to show, show you and see how it's going to perform. Uh, there are also other products that you can use on your roofs like liquid applied membranes. But today we've just chose one so uh, we'll always be showcasing this on other episodes. So be with me and welcome. So briefly, this is how the system works. You need to have the materials ready. You need to have, uh, for me now, I need to have the same flex. This is the same flex. Uh, and again, you need the membrane. This is the membrane that we are going to use. Uh, a lot of people think it's a fabric. Yeah, fine, yeah, it's a fabric, but uh, this, is more, that's, this is what we call the Sika same flex membrane, whereby it's in the class of the geotextiles. So what I'm using today, it's um, categorized in the, um, uh, by density. So this is 110 GSM. GSM means grams per square meter. We have others that are lower than this, grading, and others that are heavier, depending on the kind of work you're doing. But for us today, on the roof, work that we're going to do today, this is more ideal for the roof. 110 GSM, meaning grams per square meter. So we start now mixing our waterproofing content whereby the Sika Semflex. So what you require per square meter is um, you take one liter. This is already measured already. This is our typical fundi or normal person on site you can do if you don't have the measuring uh, apparatus on site. So what you do is make sure your apparatus they are well set and the measurements are correct. So we go for one liter water. Uh, where we have water, make sure the water is not um, salty water so that we may get the right um, mixing. So we do one liter of water to one liter of Semflex, the liquid itself, the waterproofing uh, uh, product. And then we do a measure measurement of 3.4 kgs of cement. So I have a team that is also working with me today. So we are going to start. So as you see, this is one liter of water. Okay, make sure that when you are mixing the admixture is well, you shake it well. So this is just to get consistency, yeah, then we measure for one liter. So when you do like this, this is one square meter, and because we have a full uh, service that is big, so we are going to do more than for one square meter. So we are going to measure again so that we may get consistency to be able to cover for this area we are going to do today. So we'll start again. So I'm going to do for two square meters for now. So now, because we can't carry our measuring apparatus on site, uh, cement is supposed to be 3.4 kgs. So we did our measurements correctly from the lab that we were using to measure this. And then uh, from our measuring punch, we draw a line where 3.4 kg cement is going to reach. So with the help with the, the team, we are going to measure our cement. As you see, we have 3.4, so it's not fully 3.4, so we have to add a bit to be 3.4. So 
so we are going to do two times. We need to have everything done correctly just to be very safe. So we'll start the mixing. So this is how you do the mixing. You make sure that uh, your safety is good, that you're not breathing the cement and your eyes because of the conduct of the chemical. And then you start mixing slowly. Slowly by slowly. Increasing the speed a bit. So this is going to give us now the first coating that we are going to apply right now. So with the help with the team, we'll do the first coat by a use of a brush. So this is how the first coat will look like. Okay, I'll get one person to help me, we remove. So this is a system where you need to be consistent with a good team that is helping you get the membrane out. So what you do is, you squeeze the excess liquid because we have the first, um, the first coat already done. So you squeeze the first and then uh, you do a continuous application. Making sure that there's no air handrail. how you'll be getting a consistency with a very beautiful overlap. So the reason why we are squeezing, just to make sure that there is no air that is uh, inside the membrane, we remove all the hair because we are avoiding that the membrane might swell within some time. The 
realize when you are doing uh, your water proofing during a sunny day like today, the service may be getting uh, dry very fast due to the perforation and also due to the temperatures. So you are allowed to dampen. Also the concrete as you proceed, as you realize that um, uh, the first coat is not uh, giving you uh, a strong adhesion. So you are allowed to dampen with water. And then from there, when you dampen now, immediately start with your first, uh, you continue with your application of your first coat. So in this kind of systems, uh, when it comes to waterproofing, you require to have uh, professionals, people are trained to do this kind of application because you understand most of the site and most of our uh, contractors require a guarantee after the application. So it's also good as a client to have um, professionals doing this kind of work to have a proper application and also to have a well done job at site. So when you are doing this kind of system, number one, you need also to consider on um, on the overlaps. So you see we are supposed to do between 75 to 100 mm overlap. This is just to make sure that we have uh, proper body in between the two uh, membranes because you have to cut them according to the size. As you are aware, uh, the geotextile is always one meter wide and 250 meters length. So it's very key for an applicator to consider this kind of overlaps so that you may have a proper bonding. Again, when you are doing uh, also waterproofing, you need also to consider on the param, uh, parapet walls because also this is all also a key uh, area for water. Whereby the joint between the slab and the uh, parapet wall, it also uh, works as a weak point. So in this case, you see we had already marked where we are going to reach on the waterproofing system. So we are going to do uh, after doing uh, the slab, we are going to go up again to the, uh, to the wall. So those are just the main key things that uh, as an applicator you need to consider to have a proper uh, waterproofing system. So that is it for today. You've seen by yourself how to do a waterproofing on your roof, on your roof slabs. And again, uh, it's an easy work that you can do. For all those who have been asking me about um, how to do waterproofing with Sika Semflex with membrane. You've seen it here, you've seen it today. So as you see uh, on this part, it's just a laying of the membrane. So we are going to do another coat as a, fin uh, as a final coat for today, whereby the next third coat can be done the following day. So I want to show you how it will look like. This is how it will look like with the, the first coat, the membrane and the second coat. So behind me you can see now we are going to go now with the final coat for today. Uh, this will be the final coat, that's the third coat. 
and also on my far hand that's a uh, we are going to do now the final coat that will be the third coat whereby you see the performance is good there was no swelling of the membrane so the reason why we leave to do the application for the last coat on the following day is just to note the areas whereby the uh, the applicator did not uh, remove the air nicely or where the membrane started swelling by itself so you just allow to cut the area and do a patchwork so for today we don't have an area to do a patchwork but it's a quite a beautiful work that has been done so guys thank you so much for watching i'm felista and this is women in construction